Welcome back, everybody, to break down more of what happened last night as political analyst Stan Bars from Copper State Consulting. Good to see you, Stan. Yeah, great Thanks to be here. In here. Uh, and I have to say, Stan called this six months ago. You called for a Donald Trump win uh, against President Biden, and you did against Kamala Harris as well. So you were on. Why did you think that he was going to have this kind of a win? I, th I think in the end, the fundamentals matter, right? Uh, it, there's personalities. There's all the kind of hypey drama. But that, that regular person's perspective about the economy, inflation, and their spending power, their confidence, plus the southern border. And if you want to go one more, what the international stage looks like, which scares a lot of people. A couple of wars going on. Oh, yeah. And, and when Trump says that wouldn't be happening if I were there, that feels like it means something. Uh, Kamala Harris is the incumbent. She's been at the driver's seat, and, and she couldn't differentiate herself with uh, Biden. So all in, I think voters overcame Trump's difficult personality and went with what's in their own best interest. Yeah, a flawed individual, no doubt. I think everybody knows that. We're talking about Donald Trump, but it seems like his voters, uh, traditional voters, are the ones who may be getting hit hardest by inflation, right? The working class. Yeah, and, and the Democratic Party, when you and I were young, was the working class. And we're in the midst of an alignment where the Republican Party is winning the working class. Also, the Republican Party is winning Latino voters and African American voters like no other, uh, like like it has never in our lifetime, mm. and that that feels like a trend that's happening. It's certainly why Donald Trump won Arizona. The Latino vote put Trump over. That was the difference maker. All right, let's talk about U.S. Senate and uh, Carrie Lake uh, behind Ruben Gallego, but she seems to be catching up. It seems like every batch. What are you laughing at? Yeah, I'm every laughing. batch of votes we get, you know, she's she's right. tightening it up and definitely closer than what polls suggested. Right. No, true enough. I mean, this is a. Uh, uh, the, the race is not over. Uh, I'd rather be in Gallego's spot than Lake's spot because he's got a 60,000 vote margin to play with and there's only so many ballots out there. But there's something like 700,000 ballots in Maricopa County or statewide still open. And, and in that universe, could Kerry catch Gallego? Yes, she could. But she'd have to outperform. She'd have to really outperform everything what she's been doing. And that's right. not statistically normal. So I still don't think she's the winner. But in the end, she made it a real race, uh, even if she does come in second. All right, minute left here for this segment. We talked about uh, possibly flipping our state house and Senate. Uh, does that seem to be happening? And well, what's, what's behind that? Yeah, for a moment, it looked like it was. But as votes were counted overnight, Republicans gained back. Right now, if the election were over, the state Senate would be tied at 15 and 15. But the state house would pick up one Republican seat, 32-28. It looks to me like the state Senate will eventually end up Republican 16 majority because there is a district where Senator Marsh is currently the incumbent where uh, uh, the, the candidate named Werner is catching up and is only 38 votes behind, 38. Wow. And as with the, the universe that's still out there, could easily overcome. If that happens, it's 16 Republicans again, which is what we have now. Right. So we'd be looking at uh, Republican House and Senate and a Democratic governor. Exactly, exactly status quo. Excellent. Uh, Stan, you're going to stick around. You're going to be here for Kamala Harris's speech coming up in just yes. a little bit. Thank you very much. All right.